Welcome to Environment One's Low Pressure Sewer System Installation Guide. The Environment One Grinder Pump Station is a well engineered, reliable, and proven product. Proper installation will assure years of trouble free service. In a moment, DeWitt Sosby will explain how a successful installation is accomplished and give you some important suggestions which can save you time, money, and possible headaches. The following assumptions have been made to create this installation guide. This is a new home construction. A service main has been installed. The contractor will bill the homeowner for installation. The contractor has checked with local utilities and municipalities before beginning excavation. The homeowner has met with an Environment One channel partner or experienced contractor to discuss the installation. Ballast and source backfill is needed and a curb box lateral shutoff has been installed. Hello, my name is DeWitt Sosby. I work for Ecotech. We're the local distributor here in the state of Georgia for Environment One. We're here to review the installation procedures for the model GP2010, which was part of a low pressure sewer system that was selected for this entire development. After reviewing several sanitary sewer options, the low pressure sewer system was the most economically feasible. Part of that was due to the difficult terrain that you see behind me here as well as outcroppings of rock throughout the development. This is perfect timing here. Our homeowner has showed up. Hello, Dwight. Hey, Julia, how are you? I'm doing well, yeah, thank you. Good to see your house is moving right along. It certainly is, we're getting there. Yeah, I'd like to go over with you today what we're trying to accomplish with putting in your low pressure sewer system. Sure. The selected grinder pump station meets the daily and peak sewage flows from the home to specify the correct pump station size and features. The site has been assessed for the correct power source and its rating, and to determine the control panel model to be used and any needed special features. It's helpful to gather details about the sewer system, such as the location of the gravity line, its elevation, size, type of pipe, and unique features of the site. Finally, discuss the location of the new grinder pump, control panel, and connections. You will also need to obtain the required permits and meet with subcontractors to coordinate their work and delivery of materials, such as backfill if necessary. After delivery of your station, you should take a few minutes to inspect the exterior of the station to see if there's any physical damage that you can see. Also, you will want to remove the plug, view into the station to make sure there's no damage to the pump. Open the lid, check the electrical wiring, and also view any possible damage there. Once you've inspected the station, review your installation instructions with your crew to ensure that they know the proper procedures that they need to follow installing here's the pump. The, here's what we're going to do today. We're going to install... The first step in installing an Environment One grinder pump is the excavation. Today we're installing the model 201063, which is approximately five feet deep. Before you dig, make sure you always check your OSHA requirements. Today we're digging a five foot hole to accommodate ballast, gravel, and the grinder pump. The grinder pump station is a sewage handling vessel and must be vented in accordance with local plumbing codes. The station should not be installed in locations classified as hazardous in accordance with National Electric Code ANSI NFPA 70. All piping and electrical systems must be in compliance with applicable local and state codes. Be sure to remove all large rocks and debris from the trench. Also, clear out any material that could obstruct the service line. After the excavation is complete, the next step in the installation is the preparation of the base. Part of the installation process is to ensure that the depth of the hole is at the proper elevation. We measure from the bottom of the station to the invert of the pipe to ensure we have enough room in the hole to accommodate the ballast. We also need to make sure that the slope from the building sewer 
Is it the proper elevation to ensure drainage? Check your local plumbing codes for this elevation. Suitable base material should be brought in to a 6 inch depth. Tamp thoroughly to compact the base. Make sure the base is leveled as you proceed. This pump station is lifted into place using nylon straps wrapped around the access way to make a sling. If precast ballast is used on the pump station, the unit can only be moved by connecting to the hooks and rebar. Please refer to your installation instructions for details. After placing the pump station in the site, check to ensure that it is level. With PVC pipe and fittings, a PVC pipe cleaner and PVC glue are used when connecting the service line to the pipe. Cut the remaining length of pipe to connect with the pump tank. Bevel the pipe edge that is to be inserted into the tank. Before inserting the pipe into the tank, mark a line on the pipe that is three and one half inches from the beveled edge. Use pipe lubrication or dishwashing liquid on the pipe before inserting into the tank to allow the pipe to be installed easily and to ensure proper sealing of the grommet. Insert the pipe to the measured line. Excavate a service lateral trench from the station to the main service line. Although the depth of burial varies from site to site, it is important to put the inlet and discharge pipes below the frost line. At this site, the discharge pipe is being buried below the local frost line, which is six inches. It is also important to have tracer wire installed with the pipe to assist in locating the pipe in the future. A compression fitting type discharge is being used in this installation. Apply Teflon pipe paste to the compression fitting threads before connecting to the tank. Once the fitting is hand tightened, snug the fitting with a wrench, being careful not to over tighten. Make sure the pipe has been squarely cut and deburred before being inserted into the fitting. Lubricate the O-ring. Insert the pipe and hand tighten. Once the fitting is hand tightened, snug the fitting with a wrench, being careful not to over tighten. The lateral connection at the street is accomplished in much the same manner as the connection at the pump. Once connected, do not forget to open the valve at the street and check to see that the discharge valve is open at the station. If there is no service line from the home, a 10-foot stub out should be installed into the station that has a glued end cap in place. The supply cable, a six conductor tray cable, meets NEC requirements for direct burial, as long as a minimum of 24 inches burial depth is maintained. Those portions of the cable that have less than 24 inches of cover must be contained in suitable conduit. This includes the vertical portion dropping to a 24 inch depth at the station and the vertical portion of cable rising out of the ground at the control panel. Pull the entire length of cable from the station to the mechanical stop. The gland nut should be tightened down by hand and snugged with a wrench. The cable should be of adequate length to provide a continuous run to the control panel. Pay particular attention when backfilling so that the cable is not cut, crushed, or abraded. Once all your tank connections have been made, ballast is added per your site engineer's recommendations or call your E1 distributor.
Before the ballast is poured, be sure to fill the tank with water to ensure the station doesn't shift. Water can easily be added to the tank through the wet well vent on the top of the station. For this installation, we're using angular gravel backfill compacted in one foot lifts. Make sure that acceptable backfill is brought up to the bottom of both the inlet and outlet pipe to prevent pipe deflection. When native soils are used to complete the backfilling process, make it a point to remove all large rocks and debris to avoid damaging the tank or abrading the discharge pipe. Now that we've finished the installation of the grinder pump, we'd like to discuss the final grade. There's a line on the side of the lid which indicates the final grade line. The soil should be brought to that line and sloped away from the lid to ensure proper drainage. It is very important to install the furnace protective shroud over the cable as it exits the station to prevent any abrasion to the cable. Building materials, abrasives, solvents, petroleum products, and paints should never be discharged into the grinder pump station. It is important to check to see if these materials are in the station before testing. The station should also be free of any dirt, rocks, or mud in the basin. Okay, we'll do our start up on the grinder pump station here. Well, first thing we'll do is do the continuity checks on the control panel just to be sure we have everything wired correctly here. Uh, we go to the ground, to the white and black and red wires to be sure we have no shorts. Uh, this way we know we haven't nicked a cable or anything to cause the uh, grinder pump to have a short in it. Go with our, go our red to our white wire and our red to our black wire and we can see that our on off switch is closed here and then we'll check the alarm switch and we can also see the alarm switch is in the closed position here. Now that we've completed our continuity check and we know the grinder pump station is uh, has enough water in it to go set the alarm off, we will do our run test. We'll use our clamp-on ammeter and we'll also take a volt check here to be sure we're in 10% of 240 volts. So we're in good shape there. Now uh, we want to check our alarm so we turn on the alarm breaker and we'll do a run test in the amp check and you see our ammeter is about six amps here which shows a good amperage for this pump to be running. Uh, we'll let it run f through a full cycle you see our alarm light has gone off here so we know the alarm is working properly and we will let the pump shut down. Now the pump is shut off, so we know that the uh, uh, on-off switch on the pump is working properly. And the next thing we'll do is push the push the on button just to be sure everything is in operation there. And now we've completed a run test. Next step is to close the panel up and secure it with a lock. As you complete the site restoration, make sure you don't obstruct access for future service. Make it a point to review the information on the warranty card and user instructions with the homeowner. And don't forget to give them a copy. Well, that about wraps up the installation of the Environment One grinder pump. For more information, contact your local E1 distributor. My name is DeWitt Sosby, and I'd like to thank you for watching our video.